Our sacred text for this morning comes from the lectionary and the gospel of Matthew 28, one through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. For he has been raised as he said, come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly, tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead. And indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message. For you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him and they took hold of his feet and they worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell your brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. That is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Glory to God from now on. Yes, yes. Oh, bless your name, Lord. This morning, we're going to talk about two women who find themselves going to do work and they not only have an angelic experience, but they have a Messiah experience, one that they never expected. This was not what they expected. Mary, Mary, two Marys, oh God almighty. We ask that your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit would indeed come into our homes and into the spaces where we are. Touch us. Revive us, renew us for God's work ahead. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Not what they expected. This is not something that I will go on and on and on about. This is about sometimes getting what we don't expect, especially from God. And it's also about seeing all the things of God pressed into the text that sometimes we skip over and we miss because we're listening and not seeing the word. And then when you can see it for yourself, then begin to see it in yourself. These women were not afraid. After all, they had been at the feet of Jesus during the crucifixion and they were determined to make a difference. Now, this is where I ask that the Best Salem family do your due diligence. This is part of the synoptic gospels. In Matthew's writing, which he is writing to a mainly Jewish community, he says, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. But now when you go over to Mark 16, Mark says, Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James. So sometimes when we're reading singularly one of the synoptic gospels, it, you won't get the fullness of what these men and women have seen unless you pull it all together. And when you go to Luke, Luke gives a different detail. He tells more about the angel and, and them interacting with the angel and that they actually walked into the tomb. But uh, one of the things that is consistent through all three of the Gospels 
The tomb was already empty. Come with me now. The tomb was already empty. Now, before even the stone rolled away. See, sometimes some people say that the angel rolled the stone away so Jesus could get out. Really? Really? We're talking about a man that has just descended into the pits of hell and fought with probably some of the most feared demons and the head demon. Do you think a rock could really keep him from getting out? See, there was a great earthquake when the angel came into view. The other gospels don't talk about an earthquake. They mention it in different places. But we do know after the crucifixion and somewhere during or before the resurrection, there was an earthquake. So what they saw at that time was the radiance of the angel. And why is it when, when people begin to glow with the glory of God and the presence of God, why do we become afraid? These women were afraid too. It's something in our human nature. Reverend Brown talked about that when went to the Mount of Transfiguration. It's something about seeing the glory of God coming through another human being. I'm here to tell you, I see the glory of God in each and every one of you so many times, especially when you're working in what you know you're supposed to be doing, that, that call, that centered part of who you are begins to rise up in the spirit and say, do it, go forward, go forward. I can see it when Serena and Johnny come and they're serving and they're serving and smiling. I can see it as Linda gathers the day, the things for the day and serves the people and answers the phone. She loves it. And if you go back and you begin to look at Linda be, before and after, there's, you can see the godly glory coming through here, through her. There's nothing like doing what God wants you to do. These women were doing what they wanted to do, actually. And actually, they went and got the herbs and stuff well before so that they could put it on Yeshua's body. They never, even though Yeshua told them, I am going to be gone for three days, I'll be back, I'm gonna raise from the dead. How many of you can think about the times God has told you something and you didn't believe it? Or you just kind of, yeah. God has told you about a work that God is going to do through you. And sometimes you look at your age like Abraham or you're foolish like Jacob or you need to learn the lesson of Joseph. We could go on and on. But there is a work to be done and the glory of God shines in each and every one of us, not just the angelic beings. They do not have what we have. The main thing that's really just was highlighted for me was the tomb was already empty. They had to open the door to let him know Jesus was gone, baby. Jesus was gone. If they had never opened the tomb, Jesus could have been walking all over. They were like, we saw Jesus's ghost. Did you see him over there? He just came straight through the wall. That's a ghost. And he did that and then would say, touch me, I'm flesh and bones. See, transcending and understanding what that resurrection power is in you, we haven't even touched on it. That he could eat, have something to eat, and then move on. And they'd be like, well, where did he go? That power of who Yeshua is, the father didn't mean for us to be without it. The father has always designed for us to have the fullness of who we are in God. Because we are the image of the most high God and God had to send the Messiah to make sure that image was marred no longer. As we go to the next slide, can you believe what you see? Or does God need to give you a different type of experience for you to believe that God's hand is one that is transforming? 
It is loving. And at the same time, it is a designing hand. Jesus, the women were like, okay, we're going to just go. You know, fear sometimes, if you have a healthy fear for God, fear will compel you and propel you through going on and just going through the motions. I know so many people that were just, and I was one of them. Well, why is God calling me? And you begin to go through the motions because you're afraid not to. And along the way, as you're going, just as these women did, you meet Jesus. Sometimes that person you don't really want to talk to is say, go, you might meet Jesus. Sometimes you're afraid of what the doctor is going to say, go, you're going to meet Jesus. Most importantly, you will hear Jesus. So meeting, some people meet Jesus and they never hear anything directly from the Messiah. If a preacher doesn't tell them, if an elder doesn't tell them, if a teacher, they don't hear. But I know in, in my little Conover, North Carolina way, I was like, God, I heard you have a mouth and that you talk for yourself. Will you talk to me? Meeting with the Messiah means that you should have the ability to hear what the Messiah is saying to you. Then when it gets beyond who you are, it becomes church and community. You realize it ain't all about you. Well, God came and inside of you, God gave witness to what God wants you to do. Then it should come into church and community. And doesn't mean you're telling someone else how to be. You're willing to listen to how they are and what their true needs are. If you've been missing the Lenten devotion, you've missed the brilliance of, of, of this writer bring us, bringing us into that space to make us understand God is still with us. The problem is sometimes we're not with God. We want people to have what we want them to have. We want them to look the way we want them to look. We want them to be the way we want them to be. But see, this story defies everything that we want and what we want to see and how we want it to be. Because see, the story that went out from the Roman soldiers after they went and said, hey, somebody came in, this guy that was all glowing and shiny, rolled the stone away. And he wasn't there. Well, then the story that was purported and still believed in Jewish circles that the disciples came and stole the body of Jesus and hid it. Now, how do you hide a body? Come with me now. Even back then, that would not have been easy. But that was the story. And I think that's why the tomb was empty even before they opened it. I think God was flossing like, uh-huh, what you gonna do? Mm-hmm. He didn't even have to, he's gone. You needed to roll the stone away to know that Jesus was gone. My point here is sometimes that pain that you still feel, roll the stone away so that you can see it really isn't still there. God has healed you. Sometimes we cover in ourselves places we don't want people to see and we keep something over it. Take the stone away. Either God is in you or God isn't. You think, okay, I cannot show that. And you realize, just like the soldiers and the, the women had to realize, it was empty. Now your job is to feel that. Feel it with the spirit of the living God that was given to all flesh. Don't leave it empty. But sometimes you need to open up that pain. Sometimes I used to feel like I could not face even seeing a picture of my grandmother or my grandfather without crying. When I finally rolled that stone away, I knew the spirit filled that space. And I know that they are with God and the other ancestors. And they still even look out for me and, and will come by and tell me they love me every now and then. As believers, you look at what is happening here by this realm's account, this is a supernatural event, but we are the first people not to believe the supernatural. 
We can see it and still not believe it. You can count the number of times you know that you know God saved you from utter calamity. You know it. The times when I grew up, let me tell you the biggest miracle that happened every day. I just want to give honor to God and thank God who woke me this morning, clothed in my right mind and on this side of the earth. See, for our people, that was a miracle that you woke up. And not just that you woke up, you woke up in your right mind. I used to say, why do they say this? I'd be in church, but my grandmother would say, sit up. I'm like, but they say that every week. I get it now, because I tell you what, I want to thank God this morning who woke me up clothed in my right mind. Because we could have been anywhere. We could be over in Ukraine, those people who are waiting for those who are daring to come in and rescue. Thank God for where you are now. I see the Ukrainian people thanking them for, for coming and getting them out of areas where they're bombing. So those stones that you have rolled over all the little issues inside of you, go ahead, roll them away. And then see the miracle God has done in your life. You think you've got to hide it. But he knows he's already healed you and filled you. And God has directives for you, just like Jesus gave them directives. They met Jesus, they heard Jesus, and then they worshiped Jesus. As we go to the next slide, Kenny. This is where I ask you, have you ever met Jesus? Have you ever heard the voice of God? Have you? Have you ever known what it is to, to walk in the presence of God and understand that God is forgiving you and you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? And then you're willing to go, follow that directive, to go and tell people and serve people and help people and most importantly, love people the way God has loved you. If you don't know God in this way, stop where you are now and say, Lord, I want to know you. Did I miss the time that was our meeting? Did I not understand that you would come to meet me that one time when I was so fearful and I got up and I went on and partied and did whatever? God, like the women who dared to defy the laws of the day, who got up early just to go prepare his body. You too are powerful in the hands of the Almighty God. If you would like to be a part of what God is doing in Beth Salem and community, you can give us an emoji wave. Last week, we welcomed Jesus, Julius and Miss Matt, and we wel welcomed Tina. You don't have to, if you want to open your mic and say, I would love to be a part of what God is doing in church and community. And this is so important because this right here is church and community. And God has done that miracle right before our eyes. And some of us, you know, don't even recognize that God finally got the believers out of the building and into a, a social media realm that needs the gospel, that needs the good news. As we go forward, please share our Zoom location, everything with your family and friends. And at any time you want to be a part, no matter where you are, whether you're in Georgia, New Mexico, Colorado, North Carolina, New York, you want to be a part of what Beth Salem is doing. You don't have to drive all the way here to be a part. God, I pray in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach that everyone here would not only meet the risen Messiah, but would begin to hear 
the voice of our Lord and Savior and then follow the directives of that voice. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.